Hello Muggles and welcome back to another episode of my Harry Potter Kitchen, the YouTube series where we are baking our way through the Harry Potter books, making a recipe for all of the food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made our own DIY silicone moulds and licorice ones, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it's Magic Monday, so let's see what's coming up next. If, like me, you are a fan of all things Harry Potter and you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's get back into this book and back to Hogwarts. Okay, so the rest of the journey from platform nine and three quarters is pretty much just filled with Harry and Ron stuffing their faces with all of the Wizarding World snacks that we just made. So we're going to skip ahead to chapter seven, which is the sorting hat. So all of our first years are gathering with Professor McGonagall as she leads them into the Great Hall to be sorted into their houses. Harry gets sorted into Gryffindor and then heads over to join the rest of his house. And as if by magic, loads of food appears on the table. So I think that's where our next recipes are gonna come from. The dishes in front of him were now piled with food. He had never seen so many things he'd like to eat on one table. Roast beef. Let me please begin. For this recipe, you will need a joint of beef to roast. For our seasoning rub, you will need two tablespoons of plain flour, and then a teaspoon of salt, pepper, basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, cinnamon, paprika, and chili flakes. And we're gonna accompany this with horseradish sauce. For this, you will need 125 milliliters of yogurt, two tablespoons of grated horseradish, salt and pepper, half a lemon, one teaspoon of red wine vinegar, and one tablespoon of chopped chives. Now, I absolutely love a roast dinner. And of course, in the Great Hall, there is loads of meats, but also loads of side dishes. So what we're gonna do for the next few recipes is show you a recipe for the meat and a sauce to accompany it. And then at the end, we're gonna make all of the trimmings as well. So first up is our roast beef, and I'm gonna show you how to marinate it, let it chill overnight to get all those flavors in and roast it to perfection, and then make a creamy horseradish sauce. To begin, you want to prepare your beef the day before you're going to cook it. We're gonna make a quick dry rub to flavor our beef by simply adding our flour and all of our seasonings into a bowl. That's salt, pepper, basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, cinnamon, paprika, and your chili flakes. Stir this through until it's nice and combined. You then want to get your joint of beef. I've gone for one that still has the fat on top as this is gonna hold a lot of flavor. To help all of those juices run out, I'm going to score it diagonally one side and then diagonally the other side so you get this nice crisscross pattern. The bigger the surface area, the more room there is for the flavour to come in and out of the meat. Place your beef into a dish and then generously cover it with your dry rub. You want to make sure that every side is nicely coated, so keep on patting it in until it can't absorb any more. All that's left to do for your prep is to wrap the beef in cling film, seal it down tightly, and then pop it into the fridge to chill overnight. So when it comes to the dry rub, I like to leave mine in the fridge for 24 hours because the longer you leave it, the longer it has for those flavors to permeate the meat. But if you are in a rush, then I'd say at least four hours is what you wanna go for to give it the best chance of soaking up all those flavors. While our beef is chilling in the fridge though, I'm gonna tell you all you need to know to cook your beef to perfection. And for that, you need to remember the numbers 20, 25, and 30. So if you want your beef to be rare, then all you need to remember is 20. That's leaving your beef in for 20 minutes plus 20 minutes for every 500 grams of beef. If you want it medium, 25. So it's 25 minutes plus an extra 25 minutes for every 500 grams of beef. And if you want it well done, then that's 30 minutes plus 30 minutes for every 500 grams. It's really easy to remember and it works pretty much every time as long as you've got your oven set to 180 degrees Celsius. Once your beef is well rested, you want to remove it from the fridge and allow it to come to room temperature. While it's coming up to room temperature, you can start preparing your roasting dish. And for this, I've just peeled and sliced a red onion, 
and then take in some garlic cloves and then slice them down the middle. You don't need to worry about peeling these as they're just going to add some flavour in the oven. Drizzle some olive oil into your roasting dish and then place your onions and your garlic in. I've also seasoned them with a bit of salt and pepper. You want to press these towards the middle so they make a bit of a bed for our beef to sit on. Once the beef is at room temperature and ready to go into the oven, place it on top of our onions and garlic and then pop it into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for, remember, 20, 25 or 30 plus the additional time per 500 grams. Okay, so while our beef is roasting away, we're gonna move on to making our sauce. And for this recipe, I've chosen to accompany it with a horse radish sauce, which is a classic creamy and fiery sauce that goes really well with roast beef. Now the fieriness comes from horse radish. If you've never tried it before, it's quite similar to wasabi, which you might have had on your sushi. Now, I definitely recommend making this on the day as it tends to taste better the fresher it is. But if you are really, really caught for time, then maybe do it the night before and wrap it really well in the fridge. For this recipe, I'm gonna use Greek yogurt because it's nice and light, but you can also find variations that use sour cream or mayonnaise. Horseradish sauce is really easy to make, which is why I recommend just doing it on the day. All you need to do is add your ingredients into a bowl. So that's your yogurt, your freshly grated horseradish, your salt and pepper, your lemon juice, and your red wine vinegar. For the chives, we're gonna bunch them together and then thinly chop them until they are nice and fine. Sprinkle a tablespoon of these into your sauce and then whisk it through until nice and smooth. I recommend saving some of your chives for an extra garnish so that when you add your sauce into your serving dish, you can sprinkle them on top. So once you're finished with your sauce, you are free to put your feet up and relax or get into the great hall and set the table for our feet. But make sure you keep an eye on the beef as we don't want it to overcook. Once it's been in the oven for your allocated time, take it out and leave it to rest for 10 to 15 minutes. You don't want to cut it too soon as otherwise all of those juices will run out of your beef joint and you'll be left with a tough, dry dinner. So resist the temptation to touch it, let it cool down slightly before we serve. Once it's good to go, all you need to do is place it onto your serving platter along with your horseradish sauce and then slice your beef into thin strips. As you can see, I've gone for medium, but you can make your beef however you like it to your taste. Just don't burn it. So the Great Hall Feast is underway and I cannot wait to continue making this epic meal along with all of our magical trimmings. If you don't want to miss a thing, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. That is all for now, but I will see you next week.